welcome to signal and system lecture series here in this session i'll be explaining laplace transform now see in this session i'll discuss each and every basics which is there regarding laplace transform then i'll explain you how the basic term which is there with laplace transform to represent time domain formation into frequency domain representation and uh, what are the advantages of laplace transform so all those things that i'll be discussing in this session now see what is laplace transform so laplace transform that is a tool which is used to represent given signal in frequency domain so laplace transform is also one tool to represent given signal in frequency domain so laplace transform that is also one tool that is to represent given signal in frequency domain like as we see we have some other transforms like fourier transform z transform so that is even a tool which is representing given signal in frequency domain Uh, similarly laplace transform is even a tool which is representing given signal in frequency domain now see what are the advantages of laplace transform like see as you might have seen fourier transform in mathematics now see fourier transform is not possible for some signals where it is possible to have a calculation of laplace transform so there are so many signals which is not having any fourier transform but one can have laplace transform of it so there are few basics which is what we need to understand why that is happening with some signals where you cannot represent those signals in fourier transform but one can represent that in terms of laplace transform so for that i'll explain you first few basics of that so see to explain that i'll be considering one case of system where here i have a system here i give input here i'll be having output and this system is linear time invariant system that is having impulse response h of t so input is x of t output is y of t and linear time invariant response of the system that is h of t now if i say if i say i have a signal if i say i have a signal x of t and that is g into e to the power s of t so here s is what laplace domain representation here s that is s plane so in laplace transform we explain frequency in terms of s plane and this frequency s is equals to real part plus imaginary part so in laplace transform we have a frequency that is there with the combination of real part plus imaginary part and as if you see fourier transform so fourier transform is only having imaginary plane it doesn't have real and imaginary plane so fourier transform has only imaginary plane while in laplace transform we have real plus imaginary plane so this is what the difference which is there in between laplace transform and fourier transform so fourier transform we have only imaginary plane while in laplace transform we have imaginary plus real plane so that's why there are so many signals which we can represent in terms of laplace transform but it is not possible to represent that in terms of fourier transform so this is the basic difference which is there in between laplace transform and fourier transform so this is one advantage which is there with laplace transform that's why we prefer laplace transform over fourier transform now i'll explain you how we can obtain formula of laplace transform so here i have already told you this is my output y of t 
and this is my input x of t and this is what system's response h of t so output that will be convolution of input and system response so here output will be y of t and that is convolution of x of t and h of t now see if you if you have seen my sessions based on convolution i have derived already all those formulas which is there regarding convolution so this convolution that we can represent that in this basic formula integration minus infinite to infinite h of 2 x of t minus 2 d2 one more formula that we can have it for convolution that is x of 2 h of t minus 2 and one can have this integration even h of 2 x of t minus 2 so both formulas are correct for convolution so here i have used h of 2 into x of t minus 2 integration varies from minus infinite to infinite now see as i have told x of t that is input g into e to the power st so if i place that over here then that will be minus infinite to infinite h of 2 now see x of t minus 2 so instead of t now i need to write t minus 2 so g into it as into t minus 2 d2 now see here e to the power if you re-elaborate this then this is what combination of multiplication e to the power st into e to the power minus st so if i re-elaborate this signal then you'll be finding it is h of 2 into g into e to the power st into e to the power minus s2 d2 now see this term is constant so take it outside of this integration so if i take it outside of this integration g into e to the power s t integration minus infinite to infinite h of 2 e to the power minus s2 d2 so this is what my output now here this is what laplace transform this is laplace transform of h this is what laplace transform of h so one can say and this is what input g into e to the power st you can see my input x of t that is g into e to the power st so this is my input so let me write it it is my input x of t and this is laplace transform of h of t so i am mentioning it with h of s so laplace transform that is actually h of 2 into e to the power minus s2 d2 integration varies from minus infinite to infinite so this is my output y of t that is x of t into h of s so from this from this we can say h of s that is y of t divided by x of t and that is even one can say in terms of frequency domain representation this is y of s divided by x of s so this is even essential property which we can utilize in solution of examples so in future i'll explain examples based on gate examination as well as university examination where you will be finding this kind of relations that we will be using it so here one can understand laplace transform that is laplace transform for h of s that is h of 2 e to the power minus s 2 d 2 where integration varies from minus infinite to plus infinite so similarly we can say laplace transform of x <clears throat> laplace transform of x of t so that is x of s and we can represent that by minus infinite to infinite x t e to the power minus s t d t so this is what basic formula of laplace transform 
Now see, for frequency transform, if any equation is there based on differential equation, then we can directly solve it by using Laplace transform. And in future, I'll explain few examples, like how we can solve any equation based on differential equation using Laplace transform. The reason is, it is easier to solve problems based on differential equation using Laplace transform, while it is a bit difficult to solve it by using Z transform as well as Fourier transform. So usually for differential equation solution, we use Laplace transform. I hope that you have understood this session where I have explained basics, advantages as well as how we can derive formula of Laplace transform. Thank you so much for watching this video.